Welcome to the Empowered Meaning Coaching Podcast Series. I'm your host, Louise Ann Maurice. You know I love hearing from you. So in the comment section, make sure that you're sharing your experience. And if this material is resonating with you, make sure you're giving it a thumbs up and share it with anyone who might benefit from it. Let's continue. Are procrastinators confident? What do you think? Well, in this podcast, we are going to unpack that so that you have a response that fits for you and have a deeper understanding of that. We are going to look specifically at procrastination and confidence. Begin with the meaning of procrastination and look a little bit deeper than just the dictionary definition. And then procrastination and confidence research. Very important to understand some of the recent research that's been done on procrastination and how it impacts confidence. And then procrastination and limiting beliefs. Coaching procrastinators, really important. I'm going to share with you some coaching questions that you can use and then give you guidance on where you can find additional free coaching questions. That PDF on my website, never any email address required and it's free to download. Are you ready? All right, let's listen in. Here's some quick tip reminders. There's a lot of great information contained in this podcast. I don't want you to miss anything. So if you like to read as you listen to me, click on the CC to pull up the closed captions. This gear icon, when you click on it, this will pull up the settings. The playback speed is on normal. When you click on that, you can increase the speed to 2x, which will make this go quicker. Let's continue. Let's start by dissecting the meaning of procrastination, beginning with what procrastination means to you. When you think of the word procrastination, what one word or phrase would you use to describe it? Now, I want you to keep that word in mind as I discuss the dictionary definition of procrastination from the Merriam-Webster Dictionary. Procrastination means to put off intentionally and habitually. To put off intentionally the doing of something that should be done. Now, I'll have this definition on the PDF document that I'll have available for you. Uh, toward the end of the video, I will show you uh, where to find it. Now, the character traits or personality traits that result when people procrastinate are impulsivity. People who procrastinate may have difficulty controlling their impulses, urges, or desires and may act on the spur of the moment without considering the long-term consequences or goals. They may also have low tolerance for boredom, frustration, or discomfort and may seek immediate gratification or relief. Another personality trait is that they are perfectionists. People who procrastinate may have unrealistic or rigid standards, expectations, or rules for themselves or others and may strive for flawlessness or excellence in everything they do. They may have a strong fear of failure, criticism, or rejection and may be overly self-critical or self-conscious. And lastly, they may exhibit character traits of low self-confidence. People who procrastinate may have low self-confidence, self-esteem, or self-efficacy, and may doubt their abilities, skills, or talents. They may also have negative self-image, self-talk, or self-beliefs, and may feel unworthy, incompetent, or inadequate. Now, this is the dictionary definition of procrastination and some of the character traits that people who are procrastinators have. But there's more to the story, and we'll talk about some of those myths as we continue. But how close was the dictionary definition to the one word or phrase that you used to describe procrastination? 
Now, from the dictionary definition of procrastination and the character traits of people who are procrastinators, I want you to think of people you know who fit the description. Now, as you listen to the research that's going to be coming up, you'll gain a lot more insight and perspective. But before we get to that research, let's look deeper at the meaning of procrastination, what it is, what it isn't, as well as some myths associated with it. Now remember, procrastination is the act of delaying or putting off tasks until the last minute or past the deadline. Procrastination is not the same as laziness, poor time management, delay, waiting, or postponing. Procrastination usually happens when people fear or dread completing a challenging task. To get around these negative feelings, people will do something else that makes them feel temporarily better. Now, some of the myths associated with people who are procrastinators. Myth number one, procrastinators are lazy and unmotivated. Well, the fact is procrastinators are not lazy. They're often very busy and productive, but on the wrong tasks. Procrastinators are also not unmotivated. They have goals and aspirations, but they struggle to overcome the emotional barriers that prevent them from taking action. Myth number two, procrastinators work better under pressure. Fact, procrastinators may believe that they perform better under pressure, but research shows that this is not true. Procrastination leads to lower quality of work, higher stress levels, and reduced well-being. Procrastinators also tend to overestimate how much time they have left to complete a task and underestimate how long it will take. Myth three, procrastination is a personality trait that cannot be changed. Fact, Procrastination is not a fixed trait. It is a learned behavior that can be modified with the right strategies. Procrastination is influenced by various factors such as self-efficacy, self-regulation, goal clarity, task value, and task difficulty. By addressing these fa factors, procrastinators can overcome their tendency to delay and improve their performance and satisfaction. All right, so now that you know the dictionary definition of procrastination, what it is, what it isn't, some of the character traits of procrastinators, as well as some of the myths and the facts related to those myths, now let us look at what the research says. Are procrastinators confident? Let's review that. Procrastination and confidence research. Some of the research says that procrastination can be formed in childhood in healthy ways and unhealthy distorted ways that then impact people into adulthood. Healthy procrastination can be a way of prior prioritizing tasks, managing time, or coping with stress. For example, a child may postpone doing homework until after dinner to have some free time or delay a difficult project until they have gathered more information. Unhealthy procrastination can be a result of fear of failure, criticism or rejection, low self-esteem, perfectionism, or lack of motivation. For example, a child may avoid doing homework because they are afraid of getting a bad grade or put off a project because they think that they are not good enough. These distorted ways of procrastination can lead to negative consequences in adulthood, such as poor performance, low self-confidence, anxiety, depression, or guilt. Three situations that can trigger people to procrastinate are, 
when the task is unpleasant, boring, or difficult. People may prefer to do something more enjoyable, easy, or rewarding instead of facing the challenge or discomfort of the task. The second trigger, the second situation is when the task is ambiguous complex or unclear. People may feel confused, overwhelmed, or uncertain about how to start or complete the task and may delay it until they have more clarity, guidance, or resources. And the final situation that can trigger people to procrastinate are when the task is not aligned with one's values, goals, or interests. People may lack motivation, meaning, or purpose for doing the task and may postpone it until they find a reason, incentive, or benefit for doing it. Now, the main fear that people experience when they procrastinate is the fear of failure. People who procrastinate may have high standards, expectations, or pressure for themselves or from others and may worry that they will not meet them. They may also fear the negative consequences, feedback, or judgment that may result from failing. By procrastinating, they may try to avoid or escape from these fears or rationalize their poor performance by by blaming it on the lack of time or effort. The belief that comes from the fear of failure is that one's worth, competence, or identity is dependent on one's performance or outcome. People who procrastinate may believe that they are only valuable, capable, or acceptable if they succeed, and that they are worthless, incompetent, or unacceptable if they fail. They may also believe that failure is permanent, personal, or pervasive, and that it reflects their inherent flaws or limitations. These beliefs can undermine one's self-confidence, self-esteem, and self-efficacy, and can lead to self-criticism, self-blame, or self-sabotage. The feelings that people experience when they procrastinate are usually negative, such as anxiety, stress, guilt, shame, frustration, or regret. These feelings can be caused by the anticipation of the task, the pressure of the deadline, the conflict between one's goals and actions, or the dissatisfaction with one's performance or outcome. These feelings can also reinforce the procrastination cycle as people may try to avoid or cope with them by further delaying the task or by engaging in other activities that provide temporary relief or pleasure. The behaviors and defense mechanisms that people use as protective measures when they procrastinate are avoidance. People may ignore, deny, or escape from the task or the negative feelings associated with it by distracting themselves with other activities, tasks, or people, or by withdrawing from the situation altogether. The next defense mechanism is rationalization. People may justify, minimize, or make excuses for their procrastination by blaming it on external factors such as lack of time, resources, or support, or by claiming that they work better under pressure or that the task is not important or urgent. And then the final defense mechanism is self-handicapping. People may intentionally or unintentionally create obstacles or difficulties for themselves that hinder their performance or outcome, such as not preparing well, not following instructions, or not seeking help, so that they can attribute their failure to these factors rather than to their lack of ability or effort. Procrastination is the intentional delay of an intended course of action in spite of an awareness of negative outcomes. Confidence is the belief in oneself, one's abilities, and one's worth. People who procrastinate may have less confidence than others, or they may have a false sense of confidence that is based on hiding avoiding or denying their true feelings and needs. 
Some of the obstacles or challenges that people who procrastinate are trying to cover up with their defensive or protective behaviors include a fear of being judged, rejected, or hurt by others, a lack of self-acceptance, self-esteem, or self-compassion, a desire to appear perfect, strong, or successful, a difficulty trusting, connecting, or communicating with others, a resistance to change, growth, or learning. Now, there are different factors that can cause procrastination, such as low self-confidence, anxiety, perfectionism, fear of failure, lack of motivation, confusion, or distraction. Some researchers suggest that procrastinators have less confidence than non-procrastinators because they tend to doubt their abilities. They avoid challenging tasks and seek external validation. Other researchers argue that procrastinators have more confidence than non-procrastinators because they overestimate their future performance, use procrastination as a coping strategy, and rationalize their behavior. So therefore, the relationship between procrastination and confidence is complex and may vary depending on the type of procrastination the type of confidence, and the context of the task. Some studies have found that procrastination is negatively correlated with self-efficacy, which is the belief in one's ability to complete a task. Other studies have found that procrastination is positively correlated with self-esteem, which is the overall evaluation of one's worth. However, these correlations are not causal, and there may be other factors that influence both procrastination and confidence, such as personality, mood, or motivation. Some specific details regarding statistics or research findings to support these claims are a meta-analysis of 71 studies found that procrastination was significantly and negatively related to self-efficacy with a mean correlation of minus 0.38. This means that people who procrastinate more tend to have lower self-efficacy or less confidence in their ability to complete a task. A study of 374 undergraduate students found that procrastination was significantly and positively related to self-esteem with a correlation of 0.21. This means that people who procrastinate more tend to have higher self-esteem or more confidence in their worth. A study of 212 college students found that academic procrastination was moderated by self-handicapping, which is a strategy of creating excuses for poor performance. This study found that self-handicappers who procrastinated more had higher self-esteem and lower anxiety than self-handicappers who procrastinated less, suggesting that they used procrastination as a way of protecting their confidence. And lastly, a study of 182 university students found that active procrastination, which is a type of procrastination that involves intentionally delaying tasks to work under pressure, was positively related to self-efficacy and academic performance. This means that active procrastinators had more confidence and better grades than passive procrastinators who delay tasks due to lack of motivation or skills. Remember, All of this research is being shared with you, not so that you judge people, but as a means to give you context and understanding. And as you can see, the confidence research, uh, are procrastinators more or less confident? Again, the context and understanding the origin of their behaviors and thought patterns and why they're using procrastination. And all of this helps you to be very compassionate without taking procrastination personally, their actions and behaviors, because you have to understand what's going on underneath the surface. So what is happening? 
are procrastinators? What are their limiting beliefs and how is this impacting them? Let's look at that next. Remember, limiting beliefs are negative or false assumptions that we hold about ourselves, others, or the world that prevent us from achieving our goals or fulfilling our potential. Limiting beliefs can affect our self-confidence, self-esteem, motivation, and behavior. Some limiting beliefs that procrastinators have, I have to be perfect. This belief can lead to fear of failure or criticism, which can paralyze them from taking action or completing tasks. The next limiting belief, I work better under pressure. This belief can make them delay starting or finishing tasks until the last minute, hoping that the urgency will boost their motivation and creativity. I don't have enough willpower. This limiting belief can make them feel helpless and powerless to overcome their procrastination habits. Limiting beliefs that become their scripts. Yeah, it's already too late to start now. And I need to prepare better before I can start. And another one that you'll hear quite often is, if I can't do my best, it's not worth doing it. These limiting beliefs impact their success by reducing their quality of work and increasing their stress levels, making them miss deadlines and opportunities, preventing them from taking action and learning from feedback, and disrupting their work-life balance and well-being, creating unrealistic expectations and fear of failure. Now, If you are a procrastinator yourself, what is your number one limiting belief? Because when you understand your limiting belief, then it helps you when you are coaching other people who are procrastinators. All right, so let's look at coaching procrastination next. You just learned about limiting beliefs of people who are procrastinators. Now, limiting beliefs can inform you as a coach, team lead, manager, consultant. You can help them, help you to understand them and how to coach them beyond procrastination or using it in a way that supports them to achieve their potentials. You can help them identify and challenge their limiting beliefs and replace them with more positive and empowering ones. For example, you can ask the client to reflect on the evidence for and against their beliefs and to consider alternative perspectives or interpretations. You can help them to understand how their limiting beliefs influence their emotions and reactions to the tasks they procrastinate on. For example, if you're coaching someone You can help them to recognize how their fear of failure, which is a big one, and how their perfectionism or even low self-worth may cause them to avoid or delay doing the task and how this affects their stress levels and well-being, especially if you are a health coach or a stress coach. Helping them to understand this is key. You can help them align their goals and actions with their values and purpose and to find intrinsic motivation for doing the tasks that they procrastinate on. For example, you can help them clarify their vision and mission and to reconnect their tasks with their desired outcomes and benefits. Now, let's talk about five coaching questions that you can use to help people who procrastinate. This first question Actually, first two, what is the task that you are procrastinating on and why is it important to you? So helping them connect with why, why is it important, this task? And they might say, well, it's not important. Well, tell me more about that. Because when you help them to understand, remember, it's always about guiding them to self-awareness and the fact that they're procrastinating. Maybe it's just just a habit, and maybe everything that you've learned so far in this podcast video is helping you to understand, oh yeah, exactly. 
this this is why these defense mechanisms, the fears, the feelings, these beliefs, and maybe it's something that they learned in childhood because it always helped them to get their needs met. Question two, how do you feel when you think about this task and what emotions are you experiencing? And this is something where helping people to unpack their feelings and the emotions that they are experiencing when they are dealing with a difficult task. And this becomes important for all different types of coaches, health coaches, who are guiding clients to deal with their emotional eating and when they're dealing with tasks that are very difficult and challenging, helping them to unpack these feelings and the emotions that they are experiencing and how quite possibly from childhood, if they were dealing with something and they were failing and how that just their self-worth, how their self-worth is impacting and how they emotionally eat to soothe those horrible feelings of low self-worth and low self-esteem. And when they realize that it's all connected, remember I always talk about that holistic connection, then you've helped your client. And that's why it's important to understand about procrastination in so many different levels and so many different areas. All right, question three, what are the benefits of completing this task and how would it improve your situation or well-being? Remember, we were just talking about well-being with the health coaching, but it's important to understand well-being in every aspect of people's lives, whether this procrastination is impacting their career, their relationships, or their inability to start their business or make take the next steps to building a successful business. So many areas. Question four, what are the costs of not completing this task and how would it affect your situation or well-being? So always having them understand the benefits and the costs of not completing it. And then the last question, what are the reasons or triggers that make you procrastinate on this task and how can you address them? And this becomes important because I believe in empowering people with that insight. You ultimately want to provide them with the skills that are necessary so that they can whether you are with them or not, or they are in a session, or you are guiding or managing them, however you are using this information with people, it might be for yourself as well. Always understanding those reasons and the triggers that make you procrastinate. Because when you can understand that, that's when you can deal with what's going on and the inside, that self-awareness, that self-efficacy, so that you can address them, you can put some strategies in place that are aligned with what works for you. And that's where it's important. You don't always want to be telling people what to do. You want to guide them to develop their own strategies so that whether you're there or not, they can address them and deal with them. Oh, yeah, that's just that habit that I do. Oh, okay. Oh, make it a game. Yes, I can do this. And, you know, how badly can I fail at it? If fear of failure is something that they really struggle with, make it a game. Oh, how badly can I fail? And then they realize they all of a sudden start taking away that heaviness and that weight of that fear of failure. And they look at it as an opportunity to grow and challenge themselves, always having that growth mindset. All right, so I do have five more specific questions for you that are very powerful. I'm going to help you to coach people who procrastinate. All right, so keep listening to this podcast. I'm going to share with you where you can find it. Well, that's a wrap for this podcast. Hopefully, you've been sharing your experience in the comments section. I want to hear from you. You bring with you so much valuable insight. And if this podcast, what you've been listening to, if it resonated with you, make sure you give it a thumbs up. 
as well. Share with people who can benefit from it. If you are not a subscriber, make sure you hit that subscribe button as well as the bell so you're notified when the next podcast drops. I am your podcast host, Louise Ann Maurice, and I appreciate that you've spent your valuable time with me. As promised, I'm going to share with you where you can find the valuable PDF document with the rest of the coaching questions on it. You want to go to my website, louiseannmaurice.com, and you want to click on free or hover your mouse over free, and you see all of these resources that I have for you, free coaching training, coaching questions, empowered mindset, the last one, what should I do, which was the empowered prevention series, and now coaching podcast. You want to click on coaching podcast, and that will take you to the free resources associated with season one of the coaching podcast.